um, it's one of the really great, great, intelligent fighters in the world. Um, what we're doing. And anyhow, you, Nick, did an interview with Steve Coughlin, and it was really extraordinary. And I said, this guy knows what he's talking about. No, I'm not sure whether... He was sure. <laughs> and Stephen was such a great guy. But it was a great interview, and I know that you were just like, you know, so popular and so beloved of everybody here in Ottawa. So anyhow, so you're not on CFRA anymore, and you want to talk about why or anything like that. But here you are, and um, you're going to talk about all sorts of things, I think. Because... What we said just before is that, you know, whether it's the the land ownership or whether it's the the language fairness or whether it's what we're doing with Africana, it's all related. It's all related because we're all trying to keep our country the way we want it. Okay, so with that, Nick. <laughs> Good to be behind the microphone again. <laughs> for a little while. And just as an aside, before I uh, get rolling here, I will be back online starting October the 6th. I'll be filling in the uh, um, John Council's show okay. from 9 till 11. Uh, we're going to try it for about six weeks, see how it goes. And hopefully, what it'll turn into is a two day a week slot like I used to have for a couple of reasons. One, that's what I'm already comfortable with. And the other is because I don't, as much as I love you guys, I live in Killaloo. And once you've lived in Killaloo, there ain't no place else to live. <laughs> I got my little 67 acre slice of paradise. And that's where our roots are. So I love everybody in the city, and I'm glad you're here because that means you're not in my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being a little selfish right now. But the bottom line is that um, it's just, it, that would work best for me for a lot of logistical reasons. And I also think that uh, I, I don't know how much more than two nights a week, most people could stand of me. So we'll just take take what there is. And Seven nights a week would be better. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. You can tell that to my wife, will you? <laughs> anyway, uh, I want to start off before I get into uh, my topic for the evening. Um, I was sharing with some of the ladies before the sh before <laughs> before the show. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I made an interesting discovery tonight. I found out what you call thirty-two hillbillies sitting around a kitchen table. Uh -huh. You know what they call that? Uh -huh. It's called a full set of teeth. <laughs> and you laugh, but you think you think I'm kidding. Well, think about it. It averages out. Some got two, some got none. So kind of like grandma, get in the pit, get in the, get over here around the table. We need a full set. <laughs> and that is also the biggest difference between my mother-in-law and the walrus. <gasps> the one extra tooth and the big bushy beard. Hey. Oh, okay. All right, I'll stop picking on her. She's not here to defend herself, thank God. I told her that once. <laughs> And she disappeared on me for three days. <laughs> <laughs> it took that long for the swelling to go down. Yeah. Uh, I think it won't that big and move that fast. Uh, anyway, yeah. enough of the frivolity. What I do want to do is tell you just take a moment and do a little commercial. It's not nothing drastic or, or uh, nefarious. My wife runs an organization called Warhorse. Now, Warhorse, in a nutshell, is a program designed to help soldiers and first responders, men and women in the armed forces and the ambulance services and fire departments and RCMP, all, you know, th that thin blue line keeps us all safe. Those people have some of the most traumatic jobs that there are. And they see all kinds of things that the rest of us are fortunate enough never, have, never to have to look at, maybe more than once in our lives, they deal with every day. So they can sometimes suffer traumatic uh, stress disorders that she uses horses to help deal with. Now, my father, when I was very young, shared with me a pearl of wisdom. He said, son, there are two things that are going to cause you more things, more grief in life than anything else you'll ever encounter. I said, father, please share with me this pearl of wisdom <laughs> that I may avoid this trap. She's laughing already. I, you got <laughs> I know the punchline. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't, don't blow it for me now. I've been working up to this all week. I'll help you. Anyway, I said, what is this thing? He said, horses and women, and not always in that order. And I've got... Let's see, there's seven women at my house, and right now we're up around 22 or 23 horses on one farm, and the, the, the other remainder that make up 30 are in Pembroke. So I've got plenty of both, and I've come to the conclusion he's right. Yeah. Anyway, the point is that by using horses, they, they connect to people in a way that no other being can. And horses have a unique distinction between themselves and humans, other than the obvious one, the phys physiological differences. But from a mental point of view, there's something about horses that human beings don't share. Horses can't lie. They would make excellent politicians, by the way. 
But what they do do, they will tell you in a heartbeat if you are being a jerk or not. <laughs> now, if any of you have ever tried to ride a horse, and this happened to me far more often than I ever want to admit, but you won't tell anybody, so I feel safe. <laughs> if you ever stand next to a horse trying to get on and it's doing laps, <laughs> spinning around, just basically making life difficult, not you, you say, will you stand still? I'm good, you know. What he's telling you is you're a jerk. You haven't checked in. You haven't asked him if it's okay to get on. Like, think about this. Here you are, and somebody puts a saddle on your back without ever asking you if you want it, sticks a piece of steel in your mouth, then puts the 200 pounds of weight on your back, and you're supposed to go, oh, happy day, we're going for a ride. <laughs> Yay, isn't this gonna be fun? No, you, you gotta check in with them. So we have what we call pre-flight checks. If you don't do them, you'll find out why they're called pre-flight checks, because you will be in flight. Okay. The horse will likely dump you on your head. So I won't bore you with all the details, but the bottom line is horses are intuitive and they are incredibly uh, sensitive on a psychological level that no other animal is. And that's not disrespecting, I mean, canines and things like that. Each animal serves a different purpose, but horses connect on a different level. Um, the horse is the epitome of speed, grace, and power, but also of controlled intelligence. Like, when I say that, I mean that they have a way of communicating <coughs> on a level that most of us don't even realize. I could share with you some stories, uh, but that's not why I'm here. But one of the things that I want to bring this to your attention because we now have our own brand of coffee. When I say we, I'm talking about the War Horse. Uh, and if you want to go online and help support the War Horse program, just go to warhorse.com, I think that's what it's called, or search the War Horse Project. And you'd think I'd know my wife's own website. Uh, I don't even know my own. Oh, Facebook, that's it. Anyway, <laughs> anyway it is like for 20 bucks for a pound or so. This is all specialty coffee. It's made and roasted right here in Iron Prior. Um, the the comp name of the company that uh, uh, put it up is, um, is run by a lady by the name of Kim Berry, a real sweetheart. She's a great lady, loves the program, and her company's called SNARK. Now, it's an acronym. I can't tell you what it stands for. Who cares? <laughs> but she's donating some money from every bag of coffee purchased towards the War Horse Project. So if you like a good cup of coffee, please go and check it out and you get it in a monthly, you can set it up so that every month they'll send you another pound of coffee. So you, it's automatic and you just, you know, you pay out for it online, no hassle, all that sort of stuff. All right, so that's, that's my little commercial for the War Horse Project. And I am really proud of my wife and all the good work that she's doing because believe me when I tell you, that woman is a saint. Not only did she raise, is raising the last of eight children, there's four left at home, she's had to put up with me, which is, that'll get you in, into heaven with wings and a halo all by itself. But she also runs this amazing organization and does way too much beyond, above, goes above beyond the call of duty. All right, so what I wanted to share with you this evening, do you mind if I 